Hello and welcome to a series of bonus lectures. My goal here is to provide some additional review of some material covered uh, in class. Uh, hopefully this will help clear up some questions, uh, confusions, uh, just give you a better understanding. Um, I'm going to start out talking about some basic terminology here. For example, when we talk about timing, we're concerned about pulse width. We're concerned about how long is the signal active. Um, and actually, to kind of take and take and look at an example of pulse width, um, we actually have uh, something called a transparent latch that's level sensitive. Uh, a transparent latch uh, is basically something that reflects the output or reflects the input on the output pin while its level is active and flaps it or actually flops it uh, latches it when the transition from its level to the opposite the inactive level occurs um, and what you're going to find out is that's actually the makeup the, of our D-type register flip-flop you'll see that uh, your D-type register flip-flop has uh, basically two transparent latches, transparent level sensitive latches and what happens is they alternate being in transparent or latching mode and this in effect gives us our setup and hold time requirements on a flip-flop. It's not quite that simple actually there, there's actually a race condition that needs to be satisfied but for the most part we can think of it uh, in, as basically this being our setup and hold time requirement and clocked queue. Now what does all that mean? Well, where does our setup and hold time requirements come from? Um, well these are actually characteristics of the design. Uh, what, what do they mean? They mean basically there's a minimum time that our input has to be stable. Now, it, when it has to be stable is is relative to before the clock or after the clock. Setup time must be stable before the clock edge, some finite period, uh, and hold time must be stable some finite period after. And then there's something called clocked out, which is basically the propagation delay of the flip flop. So what we're talking about here is the amount of time it takes for D to be represented on Q, that the input D, the, in, the, the, the input on pin D to be represented on the output pin Q relative to the clock edge. Um, now what happens is there's actually some additional factors that come into play here. Turns out things don't exactly rise or fall digitally. They take time to get there. There's, there's something called a slew rate. Slew rate is basically the rate of change. Uh, and what happens is the chip gets colder. It turns out that there's less resistance in the silicon. The silicon actually is a better conductor. So our rising edges are, are basically, our signal goes from zero to one much faster. And it actually goes from one to zero much faster. But for example, when, it, when the chip is running very hot or some other uh, manufacturing character or a manufacturing characteristic comes into play we actually end up with a slower uh, rise and fall time and basically what we're talking about here is uh, there's called a cold corner case and a hot corner case and typical or min tip max and what we're talking about here is the delays um, how, how delays, how signal slews change based on the temperature um, of the actual chip itself. And so being ASIC designers, we need to take into account all things that can affect our timing. So let's look at one more term here before we get into some uh, detail, some uh, examples. Uh, recovery slash removal time. Now we talked about setup and hold. Well there's this resets pit pin or there's other asynchronous input pins but resets the simplest one to talk about uh, when we talk about 
um, asynchronous signals going to synchronous ports or synchronous designs. We actually talk in terms of recovery and removal. Uh, recovery time is the amount of time that that signal must go high before the clock edge. Uh, and conversely, removal time is the amount of time the signal must stay stable after the clock edge. And this terminology is used typically for asynchronous uh, communication or synchronous inputs. Um, so let's start talking about our typical synchronous design scenario. Um, typically when we do our design, our synthesis, our synthesis handles it on a register to register basis. It actually looks at a flop to flop timing and it, it moves. It'll say, okay, let's look at this part of the design then we'll look at this part of the design and look at that part. It does it uh, basically by analyzing flop to flop timing and it determines uh, how fast can we run, what is the maximum clock frequency we can run this chip at based on register to register timing. So again the maximum clock frequency is based on the flop to flop path timing. So typically the, the slowest or longest path in your chip is called the critical path. And the critical path is basically made up of the clock to out plus the combinational logic plus the setup time, the time this signal needs to be stable before it arrives at this clock edge. That put together, those, those elements added together give us the maximum clock period um, and so we take that and we divide one divided by that number and we get the actual clock frequency um, but let's see what makes up that combinational logic so I, let's, as you can see here realistically this seems pretty fixed it's it's process controlled and this is process controlled all the stuff we do is going to be combinational logic this the code we write so what makes up the delays for that? Well there are propagation delays. Propagation delays are uh, in terms of Xilinx technology it's the time it takes to go through a lookup table through another lookup table and another lookup table. Now if you add up all the timing between the lookup tables along with the actual routing, the time it takes to get the signal from here to here you get the total propagation delay through the combinational logic. Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. We have something called fan out, where a design, a single lookup table, in, in Xilinx terms, um, it can drive multiple lookup tables. And what happens is it takes more time to turn on the light or pass a combinational logic value. I'm sorry, pass the combinational logic 0 or 1 result from this lookup table to this lookup table. There's a turn on delay, a slew. Uh, and the more you add, the longer the slew gets. And just something, an interesting fact out there um, that basically the routing delay, the path between this to this and this lookup table to this lookup table and that lookup table to that lookup table makes up about 50% of our 50 to 70% of our total propagation delay.